Hi, welcome to another video. So this uh, is a quick guide on the WS2812B addressable LEDs. I made the mistake of buying a, a big LED ring. This one's got 24 LEDs and each LED needs 24 bits of data to turn any one LED on. So 24 bits of data times 24 LEDs. Should have got the one with just eight LEDs, I guess. Anyway, I uh, received this LED ring today. It took me a while to get the timing right. Uh, you wouldn't believe the speed these LEDs work at, or the chips that drive the LEDs. Uh, we're dealing in nanoseconds, so a lot of compilers would struggle to get the slow speed, I believe. But uh, all the Microelectronica compilers, you can. I'll, I'll show you how to set up the delay. So this is, oh, I haven't got any fancy algorithms yet, as I say, I only received this today. These LEDs are running in a routine, which is running this clock, which you'll see in the background. Uh, incidentally, that's running 16-bit. Lovely clear pictures now, sorted out the timing. Uh, and plus, one of my data wires had dropped off, so I was getting funny pinks all over the place. So, as I say, so this ring of LEDs it should run in a routine. If you uh, interrupt the routine, it changes the colours. And what happens, this code is running through, it's just bit banging, sending out uh, various streams of data on one port. Uh, but then the clock has to go and get the time and update the screen, so that interrupts these LEDs. But what I have done, uh, as various seconds come along, I've just got a, a break in the line, so I'll show you the code and hopefully it will, will make sense. It's probably too bright for this camera. Let me stick that over. Don't know if that's any better. So you see just random LEDs turning on. You can see how they go turning on a lot of the reds. Uh, and you'll see in a minute some blues. There's so the, the first LED up there is white. So it's the red, green and blues turned on for white and then obviously the red, blue, green, so on and so forth. And I think there's a couple of pinks up there, there's a pink and down here somewhere. We are just turned down the red. Right, let me show you how to just, uh, your quick guide just to get them going. You can obviously work out your own algorithms but you know, you can do some fancy patterns once you get the timing right. And you haven't got a clock to run and a data logger. Uh, for those of you who haven't, haven't seen this uh, display, during the day it picks up the solar panel current and wattage, that sort of stuff. So anyway, I'll give you a quick demo of the code and the uh, data sheet. Right, so this is the chip I'm referring to, WS2812B. So each LED has got one of these chips inside or integrated with each LED. So have a look at the data sheet. I'm not going to bore you with all the specs and everything. Um, so essentially all these LED rings have got three wires, power, ground and data in. So if I scroll down to the bit we need, right, I'll do this backwards. So first of all, each LED requires 24 bits of data. So you see eight bits of green, eight bits of red, and eight bits of blue. So 24 bits to turn on any one LED. And what happens, you send 24 bits. If you only send 24 bits once, then one LED will turn on. If you send two lots of 24 bits, the first LED will turn on with whatever code you've generated. And the second lot of bits, second lot of 24 bits, will be passed on to the second LED. So if you do that 24 times, as this ring, you'll get 24 LEDs turn on. 
But as I say, to, to reiterate, if you only send 20 vor bits and stop, you'll just get one LED on. So this is working backwards. So that's what you need to turn on an LED. Now scroll back up. Right, so this is the timing chart. So let's assume you're going to turn on uh, an LED and you want it white. So you want all the reds, all the greens and all the blues uh, at like the, the strongest intensity. And so you'd send for the reds, you'd send one, 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 eight times. Eight times again for the greens, eight, time, eight times again for the blues. So it's actually green, red, blue. So this is the timing for one bit of the eight bits required for each colour. So one code. So that's the that's the on bit, that's the off bit, and this is the reset. What happens? The data goes to the LED, the colours are latched into that register, and if you want to change that register or change the colour of the LED you have to reset it. So now this is, look at this timing, it seems straightforward until you analyse the times up here. So if we take, we want to turn something on for example T1H, so this high pulse T1H, so T1H, so it's a one code high voltage time at 0.9 microseconds so that's 900 nanoseconds that's how long that part is and then the T1 low here T1 low 35 microseconds so that's 350 nanoseconds and all these times are plus or minus 150 nanoseconds so they're very generous now for those of you familiar with all the microelectronica compilers their delay routines don't go any shorter than one microsecond one microsecond is too long for these pulses so I'll show you what to do right here's my code I'll zoom in so if I go for example I'll type it out delay underscore so if you press the control space it gives you the help and what have we got up there? So we've got like 80 milliseconds, microseconds, 50 microseconds, one second, one microsecond. So one microsecond is the slowest delay, uh, or the quickest delay, which, whichever way you look at it. But if you look at the top, no, this one is down the bottom. So this is Micro C Pro for PIC32. Micro C Pro for PIC has got this same function. Uh, so void delay, delay underscore cycles, so unders, unsigned long cycles divided by 10. I believe that's clock cycles. So what you do, double click on this delay cycles, and then in brackets, how many cycles do we want to delay? So if we turn, for example, I've got mine running on RB8. If we turn RB8 on, how many cycles do we want it to stay on for before we turn it back off? So, delay underscore cycles. Now what I've done, I've done the homework. This 32-bit microcontroller is running at 80 megs. So if I just show you, I'll give you the example. Right, so I'm using RB8 to turn on this string of LEDs. So RV8 underscore bit equals one, delay cycles six, RV8 equals naught, delay cycles equals two. So you can see that's actually a third of that time. But I'll show you the scope, they will all make sense. These figures here, six and two, that's one bit of the 24 bits needed to turn on one LED. So if, I, if you, I'll scroll down and you'll get the idea. 
So this is, we're going to be turning on the greens. There's the first eight bits, then the reds, and then the blues. And that's just one LED. That's why we call it bit banging, no fancy algorithms. But it's easy to understand. So if you look here, so we've got 62, 62, 62, 62. So you can see that routine is repeated. And all I did, I didn't write this out hundreds of times for all the LEDs, just simply get the routine for one LED, copy, and then paste it further down the screen. So this is 24 bits for the first LED, and you see they're all turned on 626262. That's the on time. Then the second LED, I've highlighted what we're doing. So green off. So now instead of 62, it's 26. And if I pull up the data sheet, so you think, oh my god, how are you gonna oh I did it anyway, how am I gonna sort this out? So there's the on time, nine microseconds, or point nine microseconds, nine hundred microseconds, sorry, point nine microseconds, nine hundred nanoseconds, and thirty-five point three five microseconds off there, three hundred and fifty nanoseconds, but they're all plus or minus hundred and fifty nanoseconds. And if you look at to turn the bit off, it's just the reverse. So we've already got our time in cycles, clock delay in cycles here. So we just reverse it, put it there, and a longer time there. So in my example, six and two, two and six. And then the reset is actually quite easy. The reset time's got to be above 50 microseconds. Uh, and most compilers, or I think all compilers, you can put 50 microsecond delay. That will reset the registers so you can change the colour on the LED. Right, I'll give you a quick look at the scope and then those signals might make a bit more sense. So let me try and capture this. There's the various bits going to 24 LEDs. So there's hundreds of bits there. Let me just see if I can get a good capture. Well, so these are some ones, so turning an LED on. If I expand that out. So what I did messing about with those delays uh, in clock cycles, just uh, used random numbers and checked the frequency on here. So let me expand that out. Get the cursors. So I'm gonna measure this on time. So we're somewhere there, and uh, you can see we've got 810 nanoseconds. Uh, that's for the on bit, but remember this on bit doesn't finish until it's there. So 810 there, and the spec was 900 nanoseconds, plus or minus 150. So then move the cursor along. And for the off time here, we've got 310 nanoseconds. And you remember the spec was 0.35 microseconds or 350 nanoseconds. So we're nearly on the mark, but again, the tolerance was plus or minus 150. And then the period for the two, for the two parts of the on bit is meant to be 1.25 microseconds, so if we measure that. So that's the period of the on time, roughly. And so we've got 1.13 microseconds. So 900 on, uh, 35 off. So see if we can find some off bits. They're all ons. Yep, 
need to capture these uh, LEDs when they're when I'm sending some zeros. I've got it there. Here we go, so there's the ons. So we're turning port B pin 8 on there, a tiny delay back on, and this is the off routine. So that is just that upside down. So we can measure it anyway. So if we measure the on pulse. So we've got 320 nanoseconds, plus or minus 150 nanoseconds, remember? So it's the actual spec was 35, or 350 nanoseconds, 0.35 microseconds. And then the off time, is 820 nanoseconds. Uh, and the actual spec is 900 nanoseconds plus or minus 150 so that's how I got the timing messed about with those clock delay cycles and checked it on the scope once I had six or seven bits in the stream and it looked right uh, wrote out 24 lines and that was it and it's just start copying and pasting and then changing various LEDs from all like various parts of the go the first eight for green second part for red and the third part for blue just started changing bit different bits to from ones to noughts and so on and so forth so that's the signal so hopefully that makes sense uh, so a bit of a bugger to set up but yeah you get some fancy algorithms 10 different colors on having chasing round and whatever and tie loads of leds together I mean, incidentally, these LEDs, the addressable LEDs, are used on the, the display walls. Uh, you probably get TV pictures if you've got, I don't know, microcontrol or FPGA running fast enough. I believe that's what they use, so very versatile. And as I say, I only got this today, so I haven't done anything fancy. It took me half the evening to, to get all 24 LEDs to turn on. But you can see some pinks there. Worth messing about with reds, they're pink. So that's the LED rings using that chip, whatever it was called. So anyway, hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you very much.